Okay. Are you rolling? We're rolling. Okay, this will be uh, me, take one. I never made a decision to become a documentarian. I just, it just evolved. I mean, I was living my life. My brother was a fisherman out on Monhegan Island, a lobsterman. So I went out to, uh, to Monhegan and filmed their, their peculiar tradition of trap day. And then I went out again, hired by the National Geographic to do the same film. I know something about living on an island. I can't tell you what it is. Every time I go inshore, I'm just glad to get back home. The last film I, I did was about Tony Montanaro, who I, in my mind was one of the greatest minds who ever lived. If he wanted to be a, a, a babbling brook or a, a concept, he could demonstrate that with his, with his body. I have a, to be inspired or to be moved by whoever or whatever I'm, I'm filming. And then I, I have to be able to invest my trust in them and they in me to be successful. Well, I guess the film that I'm most noted for is an early film called Dead River Rough Cut, and it's about these two trappers up in the Maine woods. You believe in reincarnation, that there's some the soul of some old woodsman come into these birds come and they on. come back. I really enjoy directing. I would say I have a human style. I'm really cognizant of the people I'm working with. When he first left the message, you know, obviously I was horrified to hear it, but I also didn't really get the scope of the disaster. I always hope things aren't as bad as they could be, but in this case, they were. What do you think for a set? Do you think we can do with something in here? Zombies, maybe? No. I saw a huge tongue of fire coming out of the, the barn and all the films that I had made for the past 30 to 40 years went up in smoke. Uh, there's nothing I could do but, but watch it go. I, I felt worse actually about the, the, the barn, which was like a, was my little refuge. You know, everybody has sometimes or feels like they need a place to, to be with themselves and to, to think over things and that was mine. I don't want to be looking at this for the rest of my life. It having it remind me of the things that are lost. So to me, it was a no-brainer to cover it by caving the walls in and, and grading it to a slope. I chose that because it was the, the most efficient and, and peaceful solution for me. It'll, just, it'll get it out of sight and um, out of my mind for a while. I've kind of realized as, as, you, as you get older, there's things that are just much more important than things or what you've done or any of that. I think that your relationships with people are much more crucial. I mean, I've, I've experienced some losses in my life. I lost a son. Um, I lost I lost my parents when I was when I was 16. All these things are much heavier and much more concerning than than this stuff. You lost, I didn't realize you lost a son. That's a... Yeah, so, um, anyway, I, uh, I think I gotta get going. Well, the best part of filmmaking for me is when you, you're, you're shooting and you, you, you can feel that connection you've made with somebody. 
they're surprising you with what they do or they're surprising you with what they say and you're in the middle of the shot and you, and you can't, it's hard to contain yourself because you're either laughing or, or uh, thinking right on. That's the time you live for. I think you can get an assessment of a person, of who they are, and that goes back to the, the three things. How you conceive the film, knowing where to stand, and, and establishing trust. If somebody trusts you, then they're more willing to be vulnerable. And if they're vulnerable, you're getting a more true picture. What do you hope will be your... Legacy? That uh, Richard was a good guy and he made films. That's it.